We will hear argument this morning in case 23726, Moyle versus United States. The United States, the Biden administration, is suing the state of Idaho over its anti abortion law. That law stops emergency room care for women who are pregnant and having medical emergencies. The United States says that Idaho is in conflict with the 1986 Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act in Tala, which requires emergency care including abortions, if needed. Emtala's promise is simple but profound. No one who comes to an emergency room in need of urgent treatment should be denied necessary stabilizing care. This case is about how that guarantee applies to pregnant women in medical crisis. In some tragic cases, women suffer emergency complications that make continuing their pregnancy a grave threat to their lives or their health. A woman whose amniotic sac has ruptured prematurely, for example, needs immediate treatment to avoid a serious risk of infection that could cascade into sepsis and the risk of hysterectomy. A woman with severe preeclampsia can face a high risk of kidney failure that could require lifelong dialysis. In cases like these, where there is no other way to stabilize the woman's medical condition and prevent her from deteriorating, Mtala's plain text requires that she be offered pregnancy termination as the necessary treatment. And that's how this law has been understood and applied for decades. That usually poses no conflict with state law. Even states that have sharply restricted access to abortion after Dobbs generally allow exceptions to safeguard the mother's health. But Idaho makes termination a felony punishable by years of imprisonment unless it's necessary to prevent the woman's death. I think I understood my friend today to acknowledge several times that there is daylight between that standard and the necessary stabilizing treatment that Mtala would require. And the Idaho Supreme Court recognized the same thing when it specifically contrasted the necessary to prevent death exception and said it was materially narrower than a prior Idaho law that had a health exception that tracked Mtala. The situation on the ground in Idaho is showing the devastating consequences of that gap. Today, doctors in Idaho and the women in Idaho are in an impossible position. If a woman comes to an emergency room facing a grave threat to her health, but she isn't yet facing death, Doctors either have to delay treatment and allow her condition to to materially deteriorate, or they're airlifting her out of the state so she can get the emergency care that she needs. One hospital system in Idaho says that right now, it's having to transfer pregnant women in medical crisis out of the state about once every other week. That's untenable, and EMTALA does not countenance it. None of petitioners' interpretations fit with the text, and so they have tried to make this case be about the broader debate for access to abortion in cases of unwanted pregnancy. But that's not what this case is about at all. Idaho's ban on abortion is enforceable in virtually all of its applications. But in the narrow circumstances involving grave medical emergencies, Idaho cannot criminalize the essential care that EMTALA requires. Women are being denied emergency health care in Idaho right now. After the federal government sued Idaho using EMTALA, Idaho sued back. And that's why the case is now before the Supreme Court. Here's a soundbite from the Idaho lawyer. If ER doctors can perform whatever treatment they determine is appropriate, then doctors can ignore not only state abortion laws, but also state regulations on opioid use and informed consent requirements. Did you hear that soundbite? Quote, If ER doctors can perform whatever treatment is appropriate, unquote, and he's against that? Oh, my God. Yes, doctors went to medical school so they can perform whatever treatment is appropriate. If they do something wrong, they're slapped with malpractice suits and more. Now, the court appeared divided in this case, but not along political lines. They were divided along gender lines, with the male justices asking technical legal questions, but the women justices, all of them, even the conservative, asking about women's lives. You have a pregnant woman woman who is early into her second trisemester at 16 weeks, goes to the ER because she felt a, a gush of fluid leave her body. She was diagnosed with P-prom. 
the doctors believe that a medical intervention to terminate her pregnancy is needed to reduce the real medical possibility of experiencing sepsis and uncontrolled hemorrhage from the broken sac. This is a story of a real woman. She was discharged in Florida because the fetus still had fetal tones, and the hospital said she's not likely to die, but there are going to be serious medical complications. The doctors there refused to treat her because they couldn't say she would die. She was horrified, went home. The next day, she bled. She passed out, thankfully taken to the hospital. There, she received an abortion because she was about to die. What you are telling us, is that a case in which Idaho, the day before, would have said it's okay to have an abortion? Under Idaho's life-saving exception, a doctor could in good faith, if the doctor could in good faith medical judgment determine... No, I'm asking you, the Florida doctor said, I can't say she's going to die. Yeah, and Your Honor, my point if is... If your that, doctor says, I can't with a medical certainty say she's going to die, but I do know she's going to bleed to death if we don't have an abortion, but she's not bleeding yet, so I'm not sure... The doctor doesn't need to have medical certainty. The Council Supreme Court answer that yes question. or no. He doesn't have, he doesn't, cannot say that there's likely death. He can say there is likely to be a very serious medical condition, yeah, like on, a hysterectomy. Based on the Let me go to another one. Imagine a patient who goes to the ER with pre-prompt 14 weeks. Again, abortion is accepted. She's up, uh, she was in and out of the hospital up to 27 weeks. This particular patient, they tried, had to deliver her baby. The baby died. She had a hysterectomy. And she can no longer have children. All right, you're telling me the doctor there couldn't have done the abortion earlier? Hi, everybody. So that was a video that I put together on this case. And I'm now going to interject with some final thoughts of my own. I listened to the arguments in this case. And I read transcripts. And, you know, listening to the arguments, I was filled with disgust and rage. Yes, you heard right. I said rage. I'm enraged that these lawyers, that these lawyers are sitting around talking about women and denying women health care. Legislatures, state legislatures in Florida and in Utah and in other states are passing laws prohibiting basic health care for women. A woman goes into the emergency room and she's bleeding or she's, her water has burst. She's got fluid coming out of her body and they're denying her care. And in some cases they're calling airlift helicopters to airlift her out of the state. How freaking crazy is this? It is just crazy. I'm beyond myself. I want to get over myself, but I can't because this is unbelievable. You know, they talk about health care as if abortion and reproductive rights and basic health care for women and basic the right to privacy to make these decisions privately and they talk about it like, oh, well, you know, yes, uh, we think it's wrong for a doctor to make decisions about women's bodies. It's not just our little girls and our sisters that are going to be hurt by these laws. You know, men love women and men want to have babies with women and you're hurting them as well. Both sides are being hurt. This is not a strictly woman issue. This is what they're doing right now. It's, okay, I mean, I could just go on and on and just repeat over and over again how unbelievable it is. We can transplant organs. We can create robotic joints. The things we can do, we can send 
ships into outer space and they send back amazing pictures. We can do all of these things now. And this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing in the United States. We're denying women basic health care when they go into the medical emergency room. When they go into the hospital emergency room bleeding. And they're hurting these women because they're losing a baby, which is hard enough. And then they're losing the ability to get pregnant again which can be devastating for some people. It's wrong, my friends. This is wrong. What we need to do is vote. The only way we're going to solve this problem is by all of us coming out in mass in November and voting these people out and voting for reproductive freedom and getting rid of the racists and the MAGAs and the people who want to drive this country apart. Nobody wants a war. My friends, think. Think about it. Think about basic human rights. Yes, the students are protesting. Let's, let's get this right. They're not protesting for something. They're protesting because there are crimes against children happening right now. Netanyahu can't stop bombing, and guess who's getting hurt? Women and children. Women and children. Just like now, with this whole anti-healthcare for women group. And that's what it is. It's not about abortion. It's about healthcare, and it's about hurting women. You think not? It's important that we plan and that we get out and vote. This has to stop. This has to stop. I, it's listening to these men, these men talk about, oh, well, yes, a uh, fetus has rights too, and we can't. Oh, okay, the woman is alive there, and she's bleeding, and she's going to die, and the baby's going to die. What, what are we talking about here? It, it doesn't even make any sense. They don't make sense. All right, I finished. <laughs> I watched, I listened and watched this arguments in this case two weeks ago, and I've had all of the videos and all of the information and all the background on this case in my computer for two weeks, trying to calm down, trying to figure out a way to say this in a calm, rational way and not sound like a freaking psycho. So I put this video piece together, and now I'm adding this end to it for the podcast. This is serious, my friends. It's serious. We're going backwards. We're going back into the dark ages. I'm not even sure why. I'm not even sure what these people want, except to torture us. It's wrong, and we need to vote. And we need to be loud and clear about it. We need to vote. Stop talking about you don't like Joe Biden. F that shit. Stop talking about that shit. This is important. This is about our democracy, and this is about women's health care. I'm Gloria Moraga. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being there. I love you. I love you all. Please subscribe. Please follow me. Please vote. And be safe. Be safe.